this is the podcast dedicated to work-life integration. And as such, we're going to be integrating some things about life. Our life. Our life. Right. Uh, as well as uh, hopefully something you can use in your life as well. Right. So the whole point of work-life integration is it's not just business and it's not necessarily uh, just life either. Everything's so intertwined and that's really the thing we're seeing and trying to, trying to find out how to integrate those two things together. So this podcast is about the life side. I like it. I like, I it, like it too. It. I'm Let's excited. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, so one of the things we're going to do today is talk to one of Arizona's premier real estate agents. His name is Jack Black. Oh. <laughs> no, no, Jack Black. no, sorry, Jack sorry. Jack Burton. <gasps> oh, no. No, 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 no. Jack Burns. Oh, Jack. Jack Burns. So Jack is actually a phenomenal real estate agent. We ran into him uh, as he was uh, kind of hustling around and we had him buy our current house and we're also having him sell our current house because he's awesome because he really is amazing. Really. so anyway we'll beat him a little bit later before we do that the thing we want to do first and we have a unique opportunity to talk a little bit about our house and one of the things that quite frankly this is really mostly tracy but one of the things she's really really good at uh, maybe because of practice right, right? <laughs> she bought and sold a few houses uh, is staging a home uh, so we want to walk, talk a little bit about that. So yeah. We're going to walk through our house. Yeah. Right? Yeah, let's do that. And, uh, and kind of go through that. So I want to tell you a little story. Uh, you know the story. Yes. Okay. A little story. Once upon a time. No. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually, we had an open house last weekend. And two of the families that came through thought the house was professionally staged. And one of the families thought no one actually lived here. So I can think wow. of no more higher praise than that. <laughs> to Tracy's staging ability. So we're gonna walk through the house. Uh, so come with us on a tour through our house. Let's do it. So the first thing we wanna ask is, why stage your home? Why? Why indeed. So we actually- What's wrong with my house? I love my house the way it is. Right, everybody loves their own house. There you go. Jack will probably say that actually. It's one of his favorite things to say. Yeah. People like their house. Right. Yeah. yeah. But one thing we want to really kind of figure out is, okay, well, do other people like your house? And so staging that house really kind of neutralizes it. I think Tracy's going to talk a little bit about that here in just a bit. But it's always good to have some metrics, some measurements. So there was actually a 2017 National Association of Realtors survey that was done. And nearly 50% of the realtors there believe that staging affects the purchase of the home. Uh, by up to 5%. So, 5%? Round numbers. If you have a $500,000 house, then that's $25,000. So, if you had a $300,000 house, that would be? 15000 Wow. Don't quiz me that's anymore. a lot of money. Don't quiz me anymore. I heard. Don't hurt. <laughs> okay, so this accounts for higher sales, obviously. Also, 75% of those same realtors said that people can visualize themselves in your house uh, much better, so the house sells faster, it sells for more money. So that's one of the reasons, or actually two, maybe three other reasons right. to stage your house. So in staging your house, mm -hmm. one of the first things that you wanna do before you even actually stage the house is clear the clutter. Yeah, for sure. Clear it all out. Oh and you, many people think they don't really have clutter, but you do. If you have family pictures on the wall, if you have... Yeah, so it's not clutter, just clutter. It's also anything personal, yeah. uh, anything religious, uh, anything political. If you have a picture of George Bush on the wall, right. you might want to take that down right. for many reasons. Right. Number one, he's no longer the president. Right. Uh, so, you know, things like that you want to kind of remove. Also your family pictures. And don't just shove it in the closet. Right. right, right. Do you never want to put that sort of stuff in um, doors or places that potential homeowner buyers, potential buyers will be opening up and looking inside? Because then they'll think you have no storage. It'll pile on top of it. And if it falls on them, <laughs> as Tracy was pantomiming, yes. that would be way worse. Yeah, not good. Or not good. Just... Then you have a lawsuit and you don't have a sold house. Yeah, then you actually have to sell your house to pay for the loss. Right. So right. it's kind of a lose win. But number one thing to do is clear clutter. Yes. Yes. Now I'm excited to go into uh, kind of the Tracy show actually. Right. And so I'm going to get behind the camera and we're going to kind of go and talk uh, talk to the experts. Okay, let's do it. On how to stage a house. Okay. So, 
first impressions is going to be when you first open, well, when you even pull in front of the house, it needs to be a clean slate. So you first wanna clean up your front porch, right? That's when you first think, freshen it up with the plant, a new doormat, um, something to that effect, to pull your buyer in. So once you get into your space, the first thing that they're going to see is your first room. And typically that's your living room. We start here with our living room and the way I go around in staging homes when we're selling them is I start with a piece of furniture. For instance, what we started with this one was our couch. We had this somewhat neutral leather caramel colored couch and I built our room off of that. I like to uh, bring other pieces of furniture in that maybe I didn't think would go in that space and I just find uses for them. So that's one thing that's really good to be able to do. So we have our chair here that doesn't necessarily match with the actual couch per se. It's not like matchy matchy, but you don't have to have that. It's just going to be somewhat in the same color palette and it's gonna all tie together with everything. I like to pull in a rug to kind of bring those colors together. Uh, the colors and the rag match somewhat of the couch. It pulls in then at the end kind of that pop of color that I love to have in every single room that I stage. Um, and that's kind of how we do. We just kind of mix and match to make it work. I also like to do textures when I'm staging things. For instance, we've got our smooth line couch. I throw in a fluffy, you know, messed up whatever it is pillow here. <laughs> Um, and it's just another layer. You want smooth lines, you want lines, clean lines, but you also want some layer and some texture that kind of pulls the eye in and helps them kind of envision their, their lives in here. The next thing that we do is a pop of color I talked about. And my pop of color that I chose was really kind of this turquoisey color and you kind of see it in the carpet, but not really. So I threw in those floor pillows over there to kind of pull that out. And with that, if you kind of, if you kind of go that way, Jim, then you'll mm -hmm. see over into our dining room, it's that same sort of pop of color that pulls through with our buffet table that we have there. So we like to start with neutral palettes, clean lines, and bring some interest in it with um, textures. And that's where we go. Next thing, we're gonna move forward. What we really like to start with is an animal. We really think that really sells your house. <coughs> you wanna actually eliminate any animal vibes that you might have in your house because some people don't like animals. Um, and so you really want to have a clean, clean house that they don't even know that your animals live there. But beside that, we move into our dining room. And again, here we have, again, clean slate. We have simple lines, not pulling too much. We're just letting them see and visualize the space. I have a pop of color, which is our flowers in the middle. And it just adds interest to the space, but they don't quite know why. They're just like, huh, this is a really awesome room. From there, moving into our kitchen. Uh, we talked about kind of texture in the first room. And the texture that I chose within this room really is more um, in the pattern that we have going on. And that's the pattern of the floor that I chose. So um, you can, obviously can't go out and remodel your house to sell your house, but this is just something that I chose with this tile that we did. And it looks like it's a carpet, like a rug, but it's not. But again, we're back to kind of the clean lines. You want to be able to visualize yourself in this space, but you also want some interest. So we've done a pop of color again. Pop of color here is our red, um, red box. We have a slight little bit of pink over there in the corner. And then over here, we have a red garbage can. It's just, add some interest it adds kind of this is really a real basic um white but then the little bit of the color just kind of goes oh this is a cheery room i like this you want to just make sure again everything is clean clutter free uh, we try and clear off our counter space usually we don't look this clean 
but we do when we sell our house. So that's my 411. Hey everyone, we were going to have Jack on today, but as you've been able to most likely surmise, we've been having some sound issues. <laughs> we didn't find out till later. Unfortunately, Jack's was completely unintelligible, not due to Jack's fault. Uh, so we're gonna have Jack back as soon as we can, and until then, uh, hopefully we didn't torture you too bad with what you've already experienced today, uh, but we'll be back tomorrow with better sounds, and hopefully Jack, if not, we'll see you next week. Sounds great. All right. So until then, this is Jim. And this is Tracy. And, and this, this is, is the, the Multi-Pass Multi Podcast. Podcast.